Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Jesus was a troublemaker. At first, he was just a troublemaker up in the countryside where he grew up, healing some people on the Sabbath, and so making some people upset that he broke the rules. Maybe sometimes seeing to step out of his station in life, and people were upset at that. Gathering large crowds of people around him, perhaps making the powers that be worry that they would become, all those people would become troublemakers too. But as long as Jesus was up in the countryside, it didn't cause much of a fuss. Maybe a few harsh words or a little unruly mob trying to stop what he was doing. But when Jesus went to Jerusalem, his troublemaking went to a whole different level. Now, I need to take a moment here and just pause and talk about troublemaking. Not all troublemaking is necessarily helpful, but there is that kind of good trouble. A phrase coined by John Lewis, the great civil rights leader. And in a Christian sense, what good trouble is, is what happens when heaven and the values of heaven and that pure presence of God comes and mingles on the earth. You know, just like we pray that it will do every time we pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And when that heaven comes to earth, it brings with it the values that all people are equal in the love and care of God. It brings with it a deep value for lifting up those who are oppressed and lowly and raising them up to wholeness. It brings with it an almost indescribable combination of justice and mercy, of telling the truth and forgiveness. And when heaven comes to earth, people get upset. They get upset because trouble and good trouble is a little bit like that game, you may have played it, known as Jenga. A tower made of blocks. And the object of the game is to remove one little block at a time. And the more blocks you remove, the tower begins to totter a little bit. That's true. She's and you definitely do not want to be the one that removes the last block to see the whole tower come tumbling down. And what good trouble does is that it begins to disassemble towers, towers of ill-gotten power and injustice. So think about what it must have been like when this troublemaker Jesus shows up in Jerusalem. First, in a suburb of Jerusalem, but getting close, he raises Lazarus from the dead, which then draws a large crowd of people around him. And you can just imagine the leaders in Jerusalem saying, this looks like trouble. And then, on what we call Palm Sunday, Jesus, with those large crowds of people, sensing God's power in Jesus, expecting something they don't know what, parade with Jesus down the hill and through the gate and into Jerusalem 
you know that the leaders are thinking, here is a troublemaker. Jesus is a troublemaker toward the leaders of the temple. Talk about a tower and an edifice built up. And ostensibly, what the temple is about is pointing people towards their relationship with God. It's meant to be a place of sacredness where people can encounter the God who has come to dwell there. But in reality, when the light of heaven begins to shine within the temple in the person of Jesus, what's exposed is that much of the temple is concerned with keeping those who have power in power and those who have wealth to get more. And so they get upset. And what about Jesus riding in on a donkey with a biblical prophecy that says he's a king riding into Jerusalem that's controlled controlled by a government that says it's created peace throughout the earth, that the Caesar is indeed the, the bringer of peace, and here comes this person who claims to be the Prince of Peace. And when the light of heaven comes down and shines the light on that Roman Empire, the empire that claims to have brought peace is exposed. Exposed as a place instead that manages to keep order by crushing anybody who stands in its way and is slowly bleeding the peoples of the empire dry through their taxes and their folly. So Jesus is coming and he is causing much good trouble. And the leaders of that day believe that if they can just stomp Jesus out through the trial that we just lived through a moment ago in the reading and by executing him, that they will get rid of that trouble. But what Jesus knows is that when they get rid of this troublemaker, thousands more will spring up. And indeed, that's what happens. And it's been what's happening for the last 2,000 years. Troublemakers have sprung up. Let's just look at the last few years. John Lewis, the civil rights leader, who coined that phrase, good trouble, was one of those leaders that crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge some 57 years ago. They were crossing to, to bring light toward police brutality. And sure enough, as they crossed the bridge, violence erupted by the police on the other side of the bridge. And everybody saw it on TV. And it brought to light the light of heaven. People peacefully marching across that bridge brought to light the evil of the earth in the violence they faced and another little block was pulled out of the tower. More recently, think about the clergy abuse scandals in the church. For decades, young people had been abused and it had been covered up until some people finally decided that they needed to make some good trouble which told the truth about what was happening. And that light of heaven brought out of the shadows the evils of this world, no matter how much people tried to cover it up. And so they made good trouble to change the way the church worked. You could think of any number of places where we've seen good trouble interpreted by some, upsetting many, but bringing light to evil that stays in the shadows until people who bring God's light into it bring good trouble, begin to change things. And as we reflect today 
on Jesus bringing good trouble into Jerusalem. Knowing that what happens when you bring good trouble, that people are going to get upset. We too can hear the call to be bearers of good trouble. We could be a part of a march. Today, at 2 o'clock, or on Palm Sunday, if you hear this on Saturday, on Palm Sunday at 2 o'clock, people are gathering at the Hillsboro City Hall to bring light, as has happened this past week, to violence against Asian Americans, Pacific Islanders, that has gone unseen for this past year. And of course, further into history than that. So maybe you could pick up a palm, come walk the walk and pray here at St. Paul's tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow morning and pick up a palm and take it to that march as a way to create some good trouble. But it doesn't have to be a big public act like that. You could bring good trouble simply by having heartfelt conversations with people who are near you. You can bring good trouble by, by saying stop when people are doing things that keep other people down, that, that somehow uh, denigrate the dignity of any human being. You can do it just by saying stop. And instead, sharing the light that Jesus brings into the world. Really, every Christian is called to bring good trouble, which means it's being so rooted in those values of heaven and being so filled with the Spirit of God, even if we're fearful, <laughs> filled with the Spirit of God, that we bring God's presence in a way that maybe even without speaking brings the evil out of the shadows and begins to transform it. Jesus is a troublemaker. The first in a long line of his followers who are called to be troublemakers too. And so when we hear this call, whenever you see the need for heaven to break in to the dark places of this earth, go ahead and exclaim once again, as we did in the beginning of this service, let us go forth in the name of peace, in the name of Christ. Amen.